Are you looking for which BCDC might be the best unit for your setup? Well here today I've got the right video for you. We've got all the Red Arc BCDCs, everything from their core units to the brand new Alphas. So let's dive into it right now. So here we've got the classic range. These are the original BCDCs that Red Arc's had out for a long time now. So they've got the 25, the 40, and the 50. All these pretty much look the same from the outside, a slightly different paint job on the outside. This one here is the 50 amp unit that I've got, um, just for demonstration purposes. All of these, both the cores and the classics, have got the same wiring configuration. So four main cables on the outside with three small trigger wires. So your orange and your green are for mode wiring. So if you're gonna have a lithium, you connect them together. If you're having like a lead acid, you'd leave them disconnected basically. Um, blue wire is for your smart alternator. So if your vehicle has got a variable voltage or a smart alternator, you'll have to connect this to an ignition source to override it. Otherwise the charger won't always be charging. That's the same for all these BCDCs and all DCDCs as a general rule. They do generally need these for smart and variable voltage alternators. You then have four main cables. You've got an earth. This has to be a chassis ground somewhere on the vehicle. So if you've got the negative of the start battery, we normally run it back to that. You've got your red there, which is vehicle input. So from your start battery direct to this via a fuse, depending on obviously which size charge you go with. If it's a 40 or a 50 amp charger, you'd be looking at a 60 amp fuse. If you're going a 25 amp charger, it's a 40 amp fuse. You then have your brown wire here. This is your output to your auxiliary battery that you'll be charging. So same size again, you'll definitely need another fuse there. Same size as your input fuse is. So if you've got a 40 amp fuse here for a 25 amp, you still need to have a 40 amp fuse on your output as well. Lastly, you have your yellow for solar input. This is your solar positive input. So you will need to run your panel positive to this. Negative can be earthed anywhere else you'd like. So normally we run these to either one of our Egan hubs, which have got the earths all shared, or to a distribution start where you can run your earth to here, your panel earth to here, as well as your battery earth to there. Makes it all nice and work together. So that's most of it there. On the front of them, you've got your main wire um, lights there to tell you what's happening. So you've got your four main lights to tell you what charge profile you're going. You've got your vehicle and your solar lights to tell you what's going on with the unit, where it's taking power from. Lastly, you've got the stage lights. So that'll light up in multiple different patterns to tell you which stage the charger is at, whether it's in float, um, absorption, or bulk, basically. These classic chargers are mainly designed around under bonnet usage. So these ones are fully waterproof. They've sealed these units themselves. And obviously the cables you seal it yourself up themselves. So these are for under bonnet usage and handle heat a lot better. Um, so normally most popular of this range would be the 25 for most under bonnet setups that we do. Do keep in mind if you're going with a simple 100 amp hour AGM under the bonnet, not many of them can handle a charge current over 25 amps. So we normally don't recommend putting a 40 amp charger under the bonnet. Normally you'd stick with just a 25. If you're going to go something bigger like a lithium setup in the back, you can go with a 40 or a 50. That's what we normally see those setups use. Or some people will then go to the core setups if they want to try and save some money as well. In this range here, I said 25, use that for your own bonnet setups. 40s and 50s, mainly lithiums in the back if you want that extra charge right and your batteries can handle that much charge current. These are the ones to go for. So now these are the brand new Red Arc BCDC Alphas. So here today I've got the 50 and the 25. These are the two in the new BCDC Alpha range. Quite a different looking unit as you'll see compared to the older classics and cores. A lot of differences. So old ones, the BCDC cores and classics used to have cables running off the unit. These now have screw in terminals on each of them there. So they do come with screws in the box. So you just pretty much put your cables directly onto here, screw them down allowing for a bit more ease of use to remove the unit or replace it. You don't have to worry about cutting the cable too short and then you're stuffed. You've still got the ability to swap this around. Um, they've got a new feature in here. So they have a temperature sensor at the top here. So something that's new for the new BCDC Alpha ranges is they have a temperature sensor that you would connect direct to your battery to be able to monitor. It can detect from the battery to figure out exactly what temperature it's at and also compensate charge for that. So if you had something like a lithium battery that you wanted to be like a heated in the heated profile, this can detect that and make sure not charges the battery before it gets above zero. Because as you'll know, lithium batteries, you cannot charge below zero degrees. Otherwise they will set fire. 
On here we have the main four units as well, same as we did with the classic and the core. Earth, battery positive for your auxiliary battery you would like to charge, vehicle battery, solar and ignition. The same, same setup, same ways. You'll notice that this does not have the two set up wires as they used to have. That is accomplished now through the button that's on the side here or through the Red Vision app. So this is the first Red Arc charger that's standalone to have the Red Arc Red Vision system in built into it. So you can easily Bluetooth your phone to this and be able to tell how much charge it's putting in. You can change the settings over, you can see what it's doing. You could also initiate a few things through the app on this. So a few new features this has compared to the old units. You can do a vehicle charge back. So you can allow through this if your start battery was dead, let's say you've left the vehicle for a while and your battery's gone flat, you can initiate a charge back through this. So this will send back charge from your battery system, whether it's a lithium battery system or it's an underbonnet setup, it will send that power back to the start battery. It usually takes about five, 10 minutes, then you've got enough power to start it. So it's not exactly a jump start, but it is a recovery feature to help you in that setup. This also has, borrowing its same feature from the beat, from the manager alphas, has also got charge back through solar. So similar idea is the jump start feature, but as a continuous feature. So if you had a solar panel running directly to this, as soon as it detects that your rear battery or your house battery system is full, it will then start using the solar panel to charge that start battery feed. So quite a useful ability to have on there to make sure if you're leaving your car at an airport for a while or out the front of your house, you don't use the car that often, you don't have to worry about that start battery going flat. It can easily charge it back up and keep that nice and safe. These units are still IP67 rated, so perfectly good to be used under bonnet. Still able, the same way as the classics, it can easily be used under bonnet. You don't have to worry about any sort of water ingress, any heat or anything like that. One other thing you can do through the app on these is you can easily set the charge input current. So this is a new thing for the Red Arc Alpha range. Manager Alphas and BCDC Alpha both share this feature. Let's say you have a 50 amp charger and your alternator can only put out 35 amps. Now you can go into the Red Vision app and clock that amount down. So if you want to protect your alternator, you can do that. It will still pull the rest of it from solar. So now you can easily make sure you won't max out your charger. So that used to be one slight downside of the two. While they do work with both solar and vehicle input instant like simultaneously, they don't always work the best together. Whereas with this, you can allow, clock your charger down 40 amps, You've got a 200 watt panel on there, that'll put 10 amps in and you'll get your 50 amps in there. So you don't have to worry about when you set down your charger, you're setting it to its maximum it can ever do. It is input limit from the battery, not output current. So you can always max out vehicle and solar together to get the maximum out of your charger. Same with a 25, obviously most cars, pretty much any car can really do a 25 amp, but if you've got something old that really can't handle it, you can always clock it down and get the rest of it from your solar input. These are a lot more thermal efficient compared to the old classic units. As you'll notice, there's a lot more heat sink around them compared to the old units. These also have a much thicker heat sink compared to the classic and core ranges. As we notice, there's quite thick heat sinks along the front side of them on around the charger inputs themselves, as well as underneath it. So that allows for a lot more heat dissipation in high temperature environments. One nice thing is you'll probably notice it's a bit raised above where you mount it, whereas on the old units, there wasn't much range for airflow underneath. So if you're mounting this to carpet, for example, you'll probably find it'd be a lot nicer. We did find with some people mounting the core units on carpet, they would have some slight issues sometimes of overheating if there wasn't sufficient airflow. This should solve that problem with a much more airflow ability underneath it, as well as much thicker, much more significant heat sinks around the unit. One other first for the BCDC Alphas is you can now stack them on top of each other. So here I've also got a BCDC 25. So this is the 50, this is the 25. So let's say 50 amps wasn't enough for you, you really wanna get some huge amount of power back in. If you've got a big need in a big troopy or big caravan usage, you really wanna get power back in, you can stack these on top. So save a lot of space. Very simply, you just slide them through each other. So they've got little grooves in them. You just simply slide each charger through one another and they sit nice and neatly stacked like that. So you can easily run your cables on top of each other. Not having to run cables look all weirdly. You still have access to your ports all the front here to see what everything's doing, your buttons if you want to change it all, but it allows it to be nice and stacked together, still allowing it to work perfectly fine. So here I have the Red Arc core range of chargers. Now these are Red Arc's entry level chargers. You might see them and think they're the exact same as the classics. 
The main difference between these is that these are no longer waterproof. So whereas the Classic and Alphas were IP67 rated for their waterproof, these are not. So these are just entirely for in-cabin usage. So if you're mounting behind a seat or something like that, these would be the ones to go for in your setup. So we sell these a lot for people who are wanting lithium setups so that obviously have to be in your cabin as well. If you're wanting a nice cheap alternative, these are a lot cheaper compared to the Classic and Alpha but, uh, variants of the Red Arc chargers. Still get your high output between the two. They only do a 40 and a 25. They don't do a 50 in this version, but the 40 still gets quite a lot of car on out. We normally see the 40s actually peak at about 43 amps, continuously putting out at bulk. So that's pretty respectable for what they are, and you'll save yourself a ton of money with these. If you're wanting a nice, easy solution, this is the way to go. They don't have any sort of communication features or anything like that. You can still plug a shunt in to tell what it's doing, but if you're wanting a nice, easy solution to work, this would be the best way to go to save some money, especially if you want to save some money in some way to afford a lithium battery, or you want to be able to add a shunt onto your system. Some people go this way rather than going to the classic and spending a bit more money when you don't really need it. The Core 40 is probably the most popular charger we sell in the store. Um, most people these days are really stepping up to needing an extra bit of charge for what they're going. If you're going a lithium setup, you normally want a bit more current. Most lithium batteries in the market these days can easily handle a 40 amp current input and that just allows you to get them a bit more in when you can. If you're wanting to still save just that buck a bit more, go to the 25 or if you're really going with something small like a 50 amp power setup, that would be the one you'd go for. That probably can't really handle a 40 amp current input, but yeah, those are the ones we normally go for. These can also be stacked in parallel, just not stacked on top of each other as like the alphas can. So if you wanted to have two of them side by side and get a 40 and a 40 to max out your current input, you can still do that. So this unit externally does still look the same as the BCDC Classic, as you may have noticed. With the core range, they don't have that black sort of coating over them that you might tell. So that's how you can really externally differentiate between the two units. This one you notice is a bit more silver. You know, again, all the way they don't really save some money, don't spend money where it's not needed. You can see here it says Core 40 on the front of it. This one being the 40 amp version. Still on the front has your four lights to tell you what charge mode you're in, as well as your three lights to tell you where you're charging from and what state you're in. Cabling wise, still the same four main cables you have here. So you've got vehicle input, ground, auxiliary charging for going to auxiliary battery and solar positive. You then also have your three main, there's three minor cables here for charge modes. So alternator, uh, ignition feed, so for smart and variable voltage alternators, as well as charge mode wires. So same as the classics are. So if you had a classic for any reason in the back of your U and it's time to replace it, this can easily be swapped straight over. They are like for like replacement, just the fact that this unit is no longer waterproof. So that'd be the way we'd go. Okay, so in summary, these are the three main units that we'd recommend to most customers. If you just want to keep a nice, simple under bonnet setup and not want to go anything crazy, don't need any chargeback features, we'd go with the Red Oak Classic BCDC25D. This unit will give you enough charge. You can charge from a panel, you can charge from your vehicle. Gets you away nice and simply. You don't have to worry about any of the Bluetooth. If you just want to keep your setup nice and simple, that would be the way to go. If you want to go inside your cabin and go something a bit more simple still, but keep it in the cabin, possibly go with a lithium battery instead, the Core 40 would be the way to go. You get a high charge rate, save yourself some money from the Classic range. The Core 40 is even cheaper than the Classic 25 is, so you'll notice you'll save yourself a lot of money. You can go that way, add a shunt in if you'd like as well, or spend it somewhere else in your build. So you can save yourself some money and go that way. If you're wanting the bees knees and everything, you're gonna have a big setup, you're looking at Red Vision, having multiple switching setups, having screens, that is where you would see the Alpha 50 be the way to go. So this is Red Ark's best charger that is out there at the moment. Obviously, you get the added features of Bluetooth through Red Vision. You get the ability to charge back your start battery, both through solar as a constant charge, as well as the ability to have a recovery feature to charge your battery if your start battery went flat. You can also stack these on top, so if you're wanting to add multiple in line and have multiple going and you're wanting the most out of your setup, you can stack these on top. So great little feature to keep your footprint nice and small while also allowing your charge footprint to be nice and huge. If you've got any questions, give us a yell on info at perthpro.com.au or shoot us a message down below in the comments section. We'll see you in the next one.